I only needed a few things for this project, including an LED, an alligator clip, a transistor, which one of the arms broke off of the transistor while soldering, lucky me, two AA batteries as a power source, and more magnet wire than I'm willing to talk about. This is the original circuit that I was going to build, however I found a much easier one that I will show you now. So you basically have a bunch of coiled magnet wire with a resistor that's connected to a transistor. You have your approximately 3 volt power source, which is your two batteries. The resistor is about 2 kilo ohms. Now that middle section of wire comes out of the middle of the coil. Um, so the transistor goes out via the emitter, the middle one is the base, and the far right is the collector. I also had to make another coil connected to just the LED. So that transistor is a 2N2222 transistor. Now like I said, that coil is in the middle, so underneath it is 30 turns, and then that comes out, and on top of it is 30 turns, so together you have a 60 turn coil. The first step in building this is assembling the coils. Uh, like I said, the first one is going to be 60 turns, but the one connected to the LED only has to be approximately uh, 45 turns. It doesn't have to be quite as thick. So, thanks to Movie Magic, you don't have to watch me turn this thing 30 times. So here's the point at which you achieve those 30 turns, you pull out a section of it, double back, and then twist it off. And this is how you get your third, your third piece out of your magnet wire uh, coil. And then you continue the looping process, which thankfully you don't have to watch more looping and in the end you get a 60 loop cable or coil with two uh, two ends and the middle piece acts as a third junction so all I've done here is connected my coil to my two uh, AA battery power source which is about 3 volts So here I will take my transistor and uh, while soldering it, one of the arms was broken off so that's going to make it a little bit more complicated to show you how it works. I'll have to line that up and hold it and then move the ring with the LED uh, later. Uh, so the transistor, the middle one right there, the base is connected uh, to the 2 kilo ohm resistor. Now it's just a matter of following the schematic that I showed earlier. The battery gets directly connected to the alligator clip, which then acts as a switch. It would act as a switch if that wire had not broken off the transistor. So now <laughs> the transistor connection is going to act as a switch. The second process is going to be making the second magnet wire cable, which is the same process as the other one. So I sped it up and in the end all you have is that coil, about 45 turns, and it's connected to your LED. Now, let's see if I can line this up, get it connected back to the transistor. There we go. Finally, when I get it connected, I can hold it in place, and as you move the secondary cable closer to the one connected to the power source in the circuit, the LED lights up. Now, the further away, it'll get dimmer and dimmer until it dies out. And so, just for emphasis to prove that this truly is wireless energy, uh, I'll add a piece of paper in between.
and in putting the paper in between, I messed up my transistor, so I have to fast forward real quick and get it reconnected. There you go. And so the same effect. The closer it is, the brighter the LED is, and the further away it dims out until there's no more power at all. I did it again with the lights off just to show how bright that LED gets when it gets close. Even though it's not connected at all, this is completely wireless. So the final part of the project, I decided to connect a charger cable to my coil in place of the LED. And uh, once I got all that set up, I commandeered my girlfriend's iPad and figured I'd try to charge it. However, when I plugged it in, it didn't start charging. And try one more time, maybe it was faulty, but um, there didn't seem to be enough energy going through the wireless cable to charge an iPad. Now, the whole theory behind this is electromagnetic induction. So when you plug a coiled cable into a power source, as soon as the power hits it and starts traveling through the cable, it's going to cause a magnetic field, uh, almost in the form of a donut. So when you take a secondary coil and lower it down into said magnetic field, the magnetic field will start passing through the second coil, and that will induce an electric current to flow through the second coil. So you're going from an electric current to a magnetic field to an electric current. Now, as soon as you hook up a power source to this, through induction, you're going to power that. So here, they've demonstrated a toothbrush. Mine was an LED. And like I said, proximity is definitely something to worry about because as soon as you start to move the coil further away, the secondary coil further away from your primary coil, you're no longer going to have the induction and the current is going to stop. Thank you very much for watching.